guys welcome to my channel i am a novella and i've read quite a few books this week and a couple of five star reads even so yeah let's get started it's called last night at the telegraph club uh, melinda low uh, mostly writes for young adult and this is the first young adult uh, book that i've read in years I never, never read a uh, children's book or young adult, but this one phew, blew my mind. Um, so yeah, I consumed it on Audible. Uh, Natalie uh, Nordus did a, an amazing job bringing this book to life. Uh, I was staying up late because I couldn't stop listening. It was so good. So this is a story about two 17 year old girls, uh, Lily and Kath, and Lily is Chinese American. Kath is an American girl and they meet each other at school. At a certain point, Lily, who is very involved in, in the Chinese community and has only lives in Chinatown, somewhere in San Francisco, I believe it is. Yes, San Francisco. She only uh, lives in the Chinatown, she, her world uh, revolves around Chinatown and then, yeah, uh, she sits next to Kath and her best friend, Lily's best friend, tells her, stay away from that girl because she's, she's different, she's boyish and, and stories go that she's a lesbian. And to her big surprise, it doesn't scare um, Lily away. In fact, uh, she's even more drawn to Kath. And here uh, starts the story of uh, Last Night at the Telegraph Club. Uh, it's about those two young women coming of age and, and discovering each other, their sexuality, their uh, place in society. It's amazing, amazing. This book is set in nine in the early 50s, mid 50s. So it wasn't an easy uh, time to come out or to uh, accept yourself as gay. It still isn't, but then it was even more harder. And uh, they, uh, one night uh, they go to the Telegraph Club and it's a club known as where women meet and uh, yeah, it's an amazing story. It's really well written. The characters are well drawn. It's um, uh, fun to read. It's not overly romantic in a way that um, it's also very realistic the way the, the relationship evolves. So I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. It was uh, a five star read for me. Absolutely. I, I highly recommend the book and the audiobook. Then, oh, another five star read. It's a non fiction book. It's a, a memoir by uh, Marina Abramovic. Marina Abramovic, as you probably know, is a performance artist. This book is amazing, amazing, amazing. I never read biographies or memoirs because they're often very, um, yeah, colored. Maybe this is also the case, but I was recommended this book by um, a Belgian author. Well, not me, he, he wrote about it. Every time he recommends a book, it's always spot on for me. So I think we have similar tastes in reading. So I thought, why not try it? Walk Through Walls by Marina Abramovic. Wow, wow. The first couple of pages, I was thinking, why does this uh, memoir uh, such a high rating? It's, it's above 4.5 on Goodreads. But after 10 minutes in, 20 minutes in, you are mesmerized. You are mesmerized by this woman. Um, by her um, colorful past, how harsh her upbringing was, how sp uh, Spartan her upbringing was by her mother. Um, she lived in Belgrade, so uh, 
they had some really difficult times. She is a post-war child, second world child, a second world war child. And uh, yeah, her mother was overly traumatized by uh, the war and couldn't actually couldn't raise a child. And then we go through her life, her meeting with Ulai, um, uh, all the, the projects they did together, um, then why they separated, what happened. Uh, um, uh, probably very colored there, but still very interesting. But this woman, what she has done for her art, she goes through pain. That's why it's it's called uh, walk through walls because she uh, she doesn't know when to stop for her art. She goes very 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 far. Even if you don't like her art, if you don't like art in general or, or uh, contemporary art or installation art. It's still a magnificent book to read. Next up is, uh, this is the Dutch version, but it doesn't matter, it's also, it also exists in English. It's called Three Summers by um, Margarita Liberaki. I'll put the picture up. Uh, this is a beautiful story that is set in Greece. It's written by Liberaki in I think it's uh, 1946-47, something like that, just after the Second World War. Uh, Liberaki um, tells the story of three sisters during three summers, when they are around four, when they are around uh, 14 to 16, and then in the 30s. The beginning, they, they develop uh, their friendship and their yeah, a relationship with each other, and then uh, when they get older, they meet the boys, and uh, they have dreams and aspirations, and then uh, yeah, in, in later later life, they talk about their disappointments and their um, loves and their children and and normal life, beautiful and. The setting is amazing and the way uh, Liberaki um, brings the three sisters Maria, Infanda and Katarina to life is amazing. It's a beautiful book. Another translated fiction that I've read this week is uh, a four star read is uh, by Eri De Luca and it's called The Day Before Happiness. It's a short read. It's only like uh, 150 pages. It's more like a novella and um, yeah it's it's a really beautiful book it's about um, a boy who arrives arrives in a small town and he's an orphan and um, uh, Don Gaetano uh, is a janitor of a, or a sort of a concierge or yeah of a apartment building and he takes them in and he becomes his father figure and he introduces him to life and the harsh life sometimes in Napoli, the things that happen. He tells him the stories of what happened in uh, during the Second World War. He introduces him to sex. He um, uh, listens to the boy when he is in love and oh yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, he, he teaches him everything he knows actually. Why? Because he, he can tell that uh, the boy is has a real, real pure heart and um, it was amazing. Um, this is a beautiful book um, about faith and uh, believing in somebody you don't know actually and still give them a future. Uh, I've been to Napoli before and I, uh, I really could sense uh, Napoli in this book, so yeah, it's um, an absolute must read. Really good. The day before happiness. Next up is Other People Managed by Ellen Holly. I saw uh, Sean the Book Maniac talk about it on his channel and was really intrigued. Uh, this one is set in Minneapolis in the 1970s and it's about uh, uh, two women who meet in the women's coffee house and um, 
March is um, a bus driver, I believe, and Peg is studying to become a, a therapist. And uh, yeah, they start a relationship and that lasts over 20 years. And it talks about their relationship and the hardships and the difficulties and how they succumb them and how they really find ways to cope with uh, all sorts of stuff. It's not a Disney happy ever after story. It's a real story about real people with real emotions, with real difficulties and real uh, obstacles uh, that happen in their lives. It's really well told and well written. The car uh, characters are well drawn. It's, um, it touches uh, on so many, your heart on so many levels that I, I can only highly recommend it. Again, a five star read for me. Then another book that um, Sean the Book, book Maniac has read and <laughs> so did I. It's called The End of Eddie by Edouard Louis. The End of Eddie is a story about a young gay man, uh, well, boy actually, growing up in the north of France. It's harsh, it's the, the rough version, even rougher version of Sugar Bane. But I think it's really realistic, especially uh, when you grow up as a boy that is way more feminine than the rest in conditions that are not optimal. What Eddie has to endure is mind-blowing. The end of Eddie, Eddie is actually uh, Edouard Louis. His, it's, it's his memoir of his childhood. I gave this uh, one four stars. Uh, maybe it'll go up to five. I still have to think about that one. I mostly start off by giving it uh, four stars and then uh, when I keep on thinking about the book, which I do, it mostly gets a higher rating afterwards. This book is a French book, so it's translated by uh, Michael Lucy. A tough coming of age story, yeah. It's very, very, very beautiful. These were a couple of books that I've read this week. Um, it was a good reading week. I also read um, uh, God's Gods by uh, Terry Pratchett. I will uh, put a link to the original uh, video. It was a read along, so yeah, it was it was fun discovering the disc world, which was uh, completely um, unknown by me. It's not even trans. It has never been translated in Dutch. So yeah, I was. Uh, uh, it was a nice surprise and I love carrot. I love carrot and lobby and uh, yeah, it was a fun fun uh, experience for me. Thank you for watching and for your time and I hope I see you next time. Bye bye.